I do not. <laughs> I think you just rolled your eyes. I do not. <laughs> All right, we are good to go. Who you got in the office? We have Joy Martin. Joy what? Martin's here. <laughs> yeah, I know. We got Jackie Curry, Zamaria. Jerry just came through the door. Keith, Mary Lou. We got the, the J team, team leader, Miss Jackie Curry in the building. Got the Laquana Davis Realty Group. They, they're making it over here shortly with her newest team member, Alicia Woodard. So we got a, got a packed house. What my Zoom people at? Exactly. They didn't, want to hear they? Me. they didn't want to hear a word from me? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. They lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we have Umi. Umi's here as well. She was telling us about how she broke her foot. That's it's all the whole thing. <laughs> she broke up right in here only. She broke that foot. Look, I didn't go into too much detail. I didn't go into too much detail. Um, there's a more there's a lot more juice to that story. A lot more juice. Okay, uh, well, good. Oh, there we go. Margaret just came through. Margaret in the building. All right, so we're gonna get started. What I got to eat? Huh? What I got to eat? What'd you say? They uh Miss Jackie. She's trying to look through us at this point. Yeah, she is. She's like, I miss y'all. But uh Miss Jackie brought us some little Caesars, pizza pizza. Mm -hmm. And some uh and pizza, some of that good pizza. lemonade. That's Thank you, Miss Jackie. <laughs> some of that some of that good oh, thank lemonade. Thank you, thank you. Jess. All right, my Zoom people coming. They come. They come, oh, okay. they go. All right. All right. So let's jump into here. Let's jump into this thing, man, because I know, you know, Shay don't like for me to go too long. So I got to uh, make sure that I, I stay I stay the course, huh, Shay? She know I get long winded. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, we got a part so look, two. <laughs> <I> got <it. laughs> All right. So, you know, we started doing these um, a broker's words because we wanted to it, what, it, what it really serves as an opportunity to really showcase what we're going to be doing for the entire month. So we have themes for our months. So I give somebody a million dollars if they could tell us what our theme for the month of February was. Give me your best guess. You really going to give us a million dollars? Hey, man, if you believe it. <laughs> hey, look, if you believe it. <laughs> Marketing. Who, who can tell us? Who said Mark? Who said marketing? Erica. Erica, marketing? No. Theme for theme for February. Come on, y'all. Think about think about the different programming that we did in February, and see if somebody can connect the dots on what our theme. Our theme for the month of February. Remember, we had the Chantel uh, Froelich. We had E. L. Crane. Having to do with trying to area. I know area code. I can't even say two of your. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To the old, a little later, yeah. I know what am I allowed to say? You know it. Yeah, Jackie knows it. Nope, you can't say it yet. We got we got to get an audience. Look at some of the flyers. Lead generation. Lead generation. Come on, the court I knew somebody. I know that's what Jack. That's why I wouldn't let Jackie answer it. But yeah, so yes, the theme for February was lead generation. Um, but so well, as we go into March, our theme is going to be dealing with social media and digital marketing. So, uh, you know, as we get into this um, conversation, really going to be we're going to go through some of the upcoming trainings. And uh, but before we do that, I really I want to speak as far as my brokers were today um, about how to really leverage, you know, what are we doing social media? Like, what are we like? What's the point of it? Right. Like, what's the point of social media and digital marketing? Um, as a real estate professional, you are going to hear a lot about. Oh, you got to get on social media. You got to have a social media presence. You got to do video. You got to, you're going to hear that, but no one really leans in on the, the value of it because you're also going to hear, oh, well, you don't need to do that stuff to be successful, right? So you're going to have, you got both spectrums, right? So you got this one spectrum saying that you got to go all in and then you got this other spectrum that's saying, well, you ain't got to do that, right? Um, well, we're going to talk about 
I mean, the reality is, is that how you run your business, how you run your business. But what I'm going to do as your broker, obviously, I'm going to give you recommendations, in my opinion, just based off of my expertise and, you know, being in this business for the last 20 years. So it's going to be a good conversation. Uh, before we jump into that, um, I always like to start off because there are some people I never want to take for granted um, that there's not any new people that's, that that don't necessarily know about me. So I always like to start start off a little telling a little bit a bit about me. SEO Coach Mike, and then a little bit about why it's imperative to really kind of believe what I'm talking about, talk a little bit through my credibility, uh, because the reality is that I can sit here and just give you all a bunch of information, but if you don't apply it, then it's not going to have the impact. And I do what I do because I want to see impact in you all's lives, right? All right, so I'm Michael G. Davis, aka SEO Coach Mike. Uh, I am a board-certified master practitioner of success coaching, neuro-linguistics, programming, time techniques, emotional freedom techniques, and hypnotherapy. Now, all that means is, is that I've invested a lot of money and a lot of time into putting myself in a position that I give you tools, resources, information that you can utilize to make a difference in your life, okay? Uh, I am the broker and CEO of Brooks & Davis Real Estate Firm. Under my leadership, the company has grown from two individuals. We started Brooks & Davis in 2008 right out of um, the, re the recession, well, going into the recession, right? Um, after we had that big hurricane down here in Houston, I think that was Hurricane Ike. Um, that next year we started Brooks and Davis, or that year we started Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm in 2008, just me and my business co business partner. We had an assistant. Uh, he was interning with us because he was about to go to college. Uh, and he, to this day, he is still an agent with Brooks and Davis. So he's been here for 15 years uh, with us. So we've seen his whole matriculation, uh, Mr. Patrick Schenkel. Um, but we grew it from two individuals to now we have over 100 people, over 150 people actually that's a part of our organization. You do me a favor. Can you turn that fan on? Because it's going to get hot in here. <laughs> and then y'all going to start fussing at me. Don't fuss at me. Okay. You turn it on and then get it to where it kind of, it'll circulate through the room. All right. And then we'll leave that door open. So that should help us out. Um. Yeah, so two, two individuals to over 140 plus people. Uh, definitely want to shout out my core leadership team uh, for all the hard work that they're doing as far as putting this programming together to, to plan things out for our, our topics and everything. It should go. Yeah, you got it. No, 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 no. You want, we, I want it to move, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I want it to move. Yeah, I want it to move. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. You're doing an excellent job, Mary Lou. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Okay, um, so why I, I, I mentioned one of these things before, right? So with all the things that I'm, I talked about as far as what I'm certified in, you know, 20 years of being in this business, you know, the people that I've spoken to and that I've coached, like there's a clear track record of success in their lives. Um, over a three-year period, I've literally invested tens of thousands of dollars. So not a small amount, but just tens of thousands of dollars. Um, I've been a, a party to uh, over a thousand transactions. Um, I've engaged multiple thousands of realtors in that time frame because I've been a broker of that 20 years. I've been a broker for 18 of them. So a very long time. Um, I've spent, I actually calculated how many academic hours that I've spent studying this stuff. And when I say this stuff, I'm not talking about real estate. I'm talking about coaching. I'm talking about teaching. And I've spent uh, over 230 hours. And when you look at people that get doctorate degrees, that's about how many academic hours that they spend, right? So um, I said all that to say, take your books out, take your pens out. Some valuable information is about to be receiving. It's about to be given to you, right? This isn't stuff that... I'm just making up. This isn't stuff that I'm just coming up with off the fly. Like this is tapping into my experience. I mean, we've all heard about knowledge is power, right? Well, the reality is, is that knowledge is power, but the most powerful part of not the most powerful type of knowledge is what kind of knowledge? Who can tell me? Actions. Well, knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge. knowledge that comes from what? Come on now. Look at you. Somebody's <laughs> in here paying attention. Shout out to Alasia. Experiential knowledge. Most powerful type of knowledge, but it doesn't have to be your experience. 
right? So I stand before you willing to share with you my experiences in this business to help you take your business and everything to the next level. So we're talking about social media. We're talking about digital marketing um, today. So what are we going to be talking about? So we're going to be talking about that. Now, um, we're going to talk about when it comes to leads, when it comes to attracting business, right? Which is what our, our theme was in February. It was about lead generation. But we're going to talk about that and we're going to partner that with how we utilize digital marketing and how we utilize social media to achieve some of these elements of building business and attracting business, okay? Um, we're going to visit our March training. So we got a lot of March trainings and lunch presentations, business development opportunities. So we're going to visit that just to kind of give you a forecast of what uh, the month of March is going to look like as far as our programming. And then I'm just going to remind you of some outstanding benefits and features that you all have because you're a part of the Brooks and Davis family. All right. So y'all ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Shay, can you give me sharing capabilities, please? Should I have sharing capabilities? I have not sharing. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> My mouse has picked an opportune time to decide it don't want to work. And shout out to everybody on Zoom. No, it's saying I'm still disabled. How about now? All right. You might have to take close. Yeah, oh, there's my mouse. So I. Here we go. All right, so All right, so I love to pose this question, so I'm gonna pose it right now again. As a real estate professional, what ultimately must happen for you to make money? <laughs> what must happen for you to make money? You gotta get a sale. You gotta get a sale, right? right? Transactions. Right. All right, the reason that I, I'm always gonna come back here I'm always going to come back here because I know <clears throat> when you talk to realtors, when you talk to people in our industry, they like to give you a laundry list of busy work, right? So it's a lot of busy realtors that ain't making no money. And I mean busy. I mean, they are super busy. You see them on social media. You see them, you know, out and about. You see them at all the different events, right? But they ain't got no money. Wow. Because the reality is, when taking score, what at, at the end of the day, what ultimately matters is doing wow. transactions. So it's, it's got to be about the transaction. So when you're sitting there and you're assessing your business or when you're assessing what kind of activities that I need to be doing, like what are, say, we'll say money making activities, then it has to be so it has to be based on is this ultimately going to lead me to a transaction, right? When you lay your head on your pillow and you ask yourself, what I did today, can, <laughs> are you bringing back into your mind that I did some things that are moving me towards a transaction? So yes, you, you ultimately got to do a transaction for you to make money, okay? So now let's, let's, let's see what that... Um,
I call this the Real Estate Professional Success Form. Okay? So, for you to ultimately make money, where is that on this formula? Well, right here, yeah, number six. That's all the way at the bottom. Okay? And Jack, you tell me if I'm lying. Most agents don't make it to that bucket. Most agents don't, am I lying, Margaret? Most of them don't make it to that bucket. Most of say it again, Jake. They don't get out of number one. Most of them don't even get out of number one. Right? And if you don't get out of number one, you you dead before you even got started. So when that's why we started off with lead generation and attractive business. Because that's the fuel. That's the fuel for your business. It really is everything. Lead generation, attracting business, bringing bringing opportunity into your business is everything. Because without that, you can't do any of the other buckets on there. There is no, if, the, if you don't have any prospects, then there's nobody to vet, right? If you don't, and if you don't have anybody to vet, then that means there's no one to convert from a customer to a client. And if you ain't got nobody to, if you ain't got no clients, then that means there's nobody to serve. And if you ain't serving nobody, that means ain't no transactions happening. And if no transactions happening, what that mean? Ain't no you ain't making no money. It's simple. It's a simple formula. We ain't got to overcomplicate it. But look, it's just like I've heard somebody say this before. Losing weight is simple. It's just not easy. Right? Burn more calories than you take in. It's simple. It's for simple formula. But the execution of it is where people get tripped up. And that's the same thing here. The formula is simple. It's the execution of it where people get tripped up. Now, this is the this is the guarantee that Brooks and Davis has been given for years. It's if you take care of number one, we'll handle the rest of the buckets. If you take care of number one, if who take care of number one? If you take care of number one, we'll handle the rest of the buckets. Jack, you think we do a good job of that? If they if they take care of number one. Oh, yes. We do an excellent job. We got you from there. We got it. Like, literally. We got you in all the other buckets. But most people not doing their part. They're not doing their part. Which really, you know, this was one of the reasons that really drove us into coming up with our major player pledge, which is something that we're going to launch this. We'll do a full launch on it this month. Where we came to the conclusion that at Brooks and Davis, we need, we need agents that have hustle, right? Because hustle... That's going to get you through bucket number one, right? We need agents that are coachable and teachable. That'll help you get through because we're going to show you how to attract business. We're going to show you. So if you're open-minded, you got to be open-minded. As long as you're open-minded, that'll help get you through bucket one and through the rest of the buckets. But the here's a big one, following instructions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at Jackie. Jackie just rolled her eyes. Hey, on Zoom, y'all can't see it, but Jackie just rolled her eyes. <laughs> Follow instructions. You ain't got to overthink it. I was having this conversation. We had coffee. Matter of fact, Keith, Keith was at the Keith was at the meeting. Mary Lou was at the meeting. We said one of the 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 what I told the the gentleman was that a lot of new agents before they follow instructions, they have to understand it. Like before they do what we tell them to do, before they take action. When we said that earlier, before they take action. It's got to make sense to them. But here's the secret. Y'all ready for the secret? You ready? Elijah, you ready? Elijah, you ready? Elijah, I'm ready. <laughs> it ain't going to make sense to you because you ain't been in the business. This is somebody that's been doing this for years, 20 years, that they've seen, I've, I've seen, I've seen what's on the other side of the wall. Okay? So I'm telling you, for you to get to the other side of the wall, this way you got to go because I've seen it. But you like, I don't know, because I don't see it. Because you ain't been over there. You just got to do it. See, once you take action and you follow the instructions, then it's going to, guess what? It's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. But a lot of times why they're frozen is because it doesn't make sense or they don't understand it. But the reality is, is that it's not going to make sense when you first get in a business. You're doing something that you've never done before. You're doing something that there is nothing that any of you all can think of to compare it to. 
Like for us that's been in here, that seasoned agents, there's nothing that we can pull from to say, oh, real estate's like this. It's his own thing. So it's not going to make sense. It didn't make sense to me when I first got in, into the business. Margaret, did it make sense? Jackie, did it make sense when you first got in? No, no. No. I wish I had somebody to just tell me what to do and I just go do it. I did. You know, my, my journey was I had to figure it out. I had to figure it out myself. And, and from that came a lot of mistakes and bumping my head. And, you know, and even with building a brokerage firm, that's that was always where my heart was, was that I didn't want people to have to uh, revisit the same mistakes that I made. But there's a whole nother layer to get people to accept the guidance. Right. Uh, and that was another learning curve that I had to figure out. But the reality is, is that what motivates me as a broker is that I don't want people to have to go through what I went through. That's what motivates me. And that's where I get fulfillment out of it. But guess what? I can't achieve that if you don't follow instructions. I can't achieve that. I can't achieve that if you're not teachable. I can't achieve that if you're not coachable. I can't achieve that if you don't have hustle, right? And that's what helped me kind of come to that conclusion is that everybody got to kind of play their part for us to achieve it, right? I promise you I'm going to do mine, but everybody's got to, Got to play their part. OK, so the reason that I'm bringing up the real estate success formula is, number one, to understand that it doesn't start unless we do the stuff that's in the first bucket, which is attract business. Right. So now that brings me into what we're going to talk about today is that how do we utilize social media and digital marketing to help us with that component? Because, see, social media doesn't really help you with the other buckets. Like, you don't really, like, digital marketing, that, that don't help you with the other buckets. It really only helps you with bucket number one, which is to draw people to you, right? And regardless of what it is, like, whether, and regardless of what platform you're on, whether you're on LinkedIn, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, whether email, whether text message, whatever it is, doing videos, writing articles, blogs, website. Like whatever it is, it's all for bucket number one to attract business. So can we agree on that? Yeah. We can agree on that, right? And that's why I had to start the conversation with ultimately what must happen for you to make money, right? Because at the end of the day, we can't get to bucket number six until we get to bucket number one. So social media and digital marketing is a key component to help you get to bucket number six. So you can ultimately make some money. Now, if you don't understand why you need to be on social media, if you don't understand why you need to be doing video, if you don't understand where it's taking you, what are the odds that you're going to do it? What are the odds? <laughs> right? And let Joy laughing because that's where you went. That's where we end up. Like, people are not doing it. They're not on social. They're not doing the videos. They're not because they don't understand the part that it plays right. in ultimately you being successful in real estate. That's the part that it plays. We yeah. got to use that. We got to use that to attract business to get the wheel started. Okay? Now, yeah, there are other things, there are other activities that you can do that will achieve the same goal, which is attract business. But it's like you got to submit to the process, like fall in love with the process. You ain't got to fall in love with it, uh, Joy. You just got to do it. it. Well, I say just do it, Joy. You ain't got to love it. <laughs> How many of y'all done, done stuff y'all didn't love? We all, we all do it. Like, we do stuff we don't like doing. We, we do stuff that we don't love doing. Not for real estate. <laughs> right, not for real estate. Yeah, exactly. We didn't, look, we, didn't do, we do stuff that we don't really enjoy doing, but we do it because there's a reason. I give it, I'm going to use me as an example today. My son got a baseball game. That baseball game going to end at probably 6.45. And from there, I got to take him to Rosenberg <laughs> for baseball practice. You think I want to do that? <laughs> just thinking about it. I'm like, bro, just because they want to practice on turf. All these baseball fields that we're going to be passing. I got to go to Rosenberg to take him, which means I probably, and then we come home. I ain't going to get home to about 10 o'clock at night. You think I, I didn't fell in love with that? No. Am I going to do it? Yes, because of my reason for doing it, right? I love him, right? So it's, you got to, that's what you got to connect the task with, right? I want to make money, 
so I do social media, right? I want to make money, so I do digital marketing. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to connect it with where you're trying to get to, okay? Um. So, oh, that's my wife being rude? Yes. Like her name on the door. She's going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> she, 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 she had Davis. Uh, her name on the door. Um, Question for you. Yes, ma'am. On the second the slide we just passed. Okay. Um, The question part, uh, I think step number two. Mm -hmm. When it comes to social media, I think usually a lot of times if you're educating them and removing the objectives of the problem, I think we talked about it at least. Generation less, mm -hmm. uh, where he's like figure out what their objections is and then mm -hmm. kind of eliminate that. But you can use that to the power of social media, where mm -hmm. you just like if you have all this, you know, if you're first time home buyers mm -hmm. or how to target certain rich people area, and be like what is your objection, mm -hmm. and kind of making a video based on that and it's educating them, educating them how they can get a home, how they can get a loan. Yeah, what, uh, 103%? Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I am I'm want to change that word, though, okay. because I think education trips people up on social media, all right? You want to inform people. You don't want to educate, because, look, a buyer does not care what earnest money means. They don't care about that. A buyer does not care what option, like, if you're going to be there, you need to know what earnest money money right. is. They don't need to know as a consumer. They don't, they don't care. Like they don't they don't need to know the the mechanics of real estate. That's what we need to know. But now what Umi's talking about is you want to inform people. Hey, there's a there's finance where you can get 103%. That's information. That's not it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I get it. But go ahead. Yeah, that's uh wouldn't that be if you were really taking social media seriously, wouldn't that help step two? Oh, as far as vetting? Asking questions, being able to... Because if you're able to eliminate that issue, now you have people hitting you up and being like, okay, tell me more about it. Well, here's the thing. Well, so the people hitting you up saying, tell me more about it, is still a trap. All right? Okay. This is what vet is. Vet is... So when the, when the last time you looked at your credit? When... uh, if, if you haven't, hey, let me connect you with the lender so we can run a loan application. See, vetting is about determining if the piece, if the person is able to do what it is that they want to do versus not able. Under a track, yeah, you got, and we're going to talk about that on this next one because you got three levels of uh, lead. You got lead generation, you have lead management, and then you have lead fulfillment. See, lead fulfillment it takes you into bucket number three, right? So, and so lead fulfillment, but again, it's not you utilizing social media for lead fulfillment. At that point, it's got to be a one-on-one -on -one type of interaction with you and the prospect, right? But, but no, that, we're, so we're going to talk about that on this slide. The three levels of income producing activities, and it's all about leads, right? Now, this is another place that a lot of agents get tripped up. So they'll say, all right, Mike, I'm going to go out there, man. I'm going to attract some business and I'm going to bring, and they go out there and they do it. They start getting leads. They start people raising their hands and saying, hey, I'm ready to go. I I, I want to buy, right? I want to, I need to sell, right? They start doing it, but then this is where they get tripped up. I want to buy, but my credit bag. Here go the agent. They ain't serious. They do no will. Hey, once you get your credit together, call me back. Right. Or they get, I want to buy. Hey, when the last time you looked at your credit? I hadn't looked at it. Okay, let me set, let me set you up an appointment with the lender. All right. They don't show to the appointment with the lender. All right. Then you call them back, they don't answer your phone call. Then you shoot them a text, they don't, they don't call. So you try to hit them three more times within say a two-week period. They ain't serious. And you don't try to call them no more. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't serious. I need him to be motivated. Man, say, ah, look what she say. What she say? I need him to be motivated. I need him to be motivated. This is what I say. Look, look, look this is what I say all the time. I say, I, I say, look at it. I don't want no house. If they were serious, they'll call me. If they were serious, they'll call me. They would answer the phone. Boy, I promise you, I get, I get, I got a laundry, I got a laundry list of what y'all be saying to me, right? And this is what my response to that is: If they were motivated, 
what they need you for. If they were ready, they're not ready. Look, this is why I get that one too. They're not ready. If they were ready, what they need you for? Like, what's your role? If they were ready, if they were ready, they're walking in the door, they credit is where it needs to be, they got the money set. Now, here's the question. Who told them what to do to get ready? Yeah. People out here just expected what we was born and just knew what the real estate process, like what I needed to do to prepare a buy a house. Who's telling them? You were supposed to do that. Like that's a part of your job description as a real estate professional. You're supposed to be out here talking to as many people as possible, educating them on what they need to be doing to get prepared, working with them through that process to get them ready. But they, they ain't serious. So literally, people, agents, doing a phenomenal job of level one. I mean, phenomenal, just bringing in all kind of leads and sitting on them. Wow. Feeling like looking for the person that's ready, looking for the person that's motivated. Again, y'all want another secret? They ain't there. Either they're not, they not, they're not going to come looking like that, number one. And number two, if they are motivated and ready, guess what else? They got a realtor already. They got one already. They're using the person that helped them get ready. They that got prepared, prepared. So that that's takes us into level two, which is lead management, right? The lead management part of it is where the bridge is the gap that most realtors are fumbling. They're attracting the leads, but they're not being fulfilled and they don't understand why. And the reason is, is because you never manage. You have no kind of lead management system in place. So you attract them and then that's that's it. I was literally, I mean, true story. I can't make this stuff up. On the phone with a couple that I've been talking to these people. I've been talking to them since July of last year. They got a house in Kingwood that I've been talking to these people about. These people, now I've been talking to these people about there's a program that'll come and do the repairs and then they pay them at closing. Like, oh, I've been talking, I've been talking to the wife, I've talked to her multiple times, I've talked to the husband. We did had three way phone conversations. It's been multiple times they ain't answered the phone, but multiple times I've been sent text messages, they ain't responded to text messages. I didn't send them emails. I mean, I didn't touch these people for a, a whole lot since July of last year. I was on the phone with them on Monday, right before I'm doing Monday Night Live. And the only reason that she re re uh, responded to me because I texted her and she didn't know who I was. She was like, who is this? <laughs> I got a new phone. Who is this, right? So I texted her. I texted her back, told her who I was. And I was like, and then she was like, well, now we just got to get some things in order, blah, blah, blah. So this was early in the day. She hits me in the evening right before I'm getting on there. And she was like, so I want you to have a conversation with my husband. I just, I ain't talk to these, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's have a conversation with your husband. I'm like, I ain't been. Call him. These people thought I was trying to buy the house. <laughs> these people thought I was trying to buy the house and that I was just going to lowball them and that I was, I was selling them all these. She had literally got me confused with somebody else. So that's what all that was. Months. months. And she's like, yeah, I got a whole bunch of you know, um, postcards of people promising me these things, but your information's on top because you the one that, check this out, keeps following up. That's what she said. She said, you the one keep following up. And I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that hustle. She used that word, that hustle. But she thought I was trying to buy the house and he thought that. So the husband was the one that was really against it because he thought I was trying to buy the house. Oh, he just trying to, you know, just telling you stuff and this, this and that. He got an ulterior motive. Once I was fully able to inform them of what I was really reaching out to them about, now in two weeks we need to meet. He really yeah, want to meet you. It. Figured it out, yeah. So that's lead management. Do you think a lot of people operate in a sense of sales rather than actually being a former? The like, like you mean like the agent people? Yeah, like I. Oh, nobody's told them anything different. Mm -hmm. Nobody. I mean, think about it. When you look at when you look at the stuff on TV. The, you know, you look at the stuff on the reality shows, you know, what's promoted is the stuff that's entertaining and the stuff that's entertaining is the salesmanship oh, cool. the, or the perceived salesmanship, right? That's the entertaining part of it. Not, I've been 
hitting these people twice a month since January. That ain't ain't nobody finna watch that. <laughs> they gonna move on to something else. So yeah, but nobody's telling them anything different. So the lead management piece is, is important. All right. So now all of this is in what bucket? Let's see if y'all really paying attention. Lead fulfillment. What bucket is it in? Oh, all right. Oh. I'm just trying to make sure y'all still paying attention. All right. We still in bucket number one. All right. You can use social media and digital marketing to help you with lead generation and lead management. Right? You attract somebody and they say, man, I really want to buy, but my, my credit is bad. Go find them on social media. Like once you create a strategy to where you're posting on a consistent basis, then you want to just be in front of them. So whether this lady is responding to my text messages or responding to my phone calls or even looking at the emails that I sent her, if I didn't connect it with her on social media, there's still a chance I'm in front of her. Right? So you can definitely use social media and digital marketing to help you with that piece of the the nurturing, the lead management. We we were doing a, a training before, and um, it was Evans. Evans, that's the work. That's what he said. That's the work of it. That's the work, and that's the work that nobody want to do. That's the mundane. It's boring. It ain't exciting. That's the one where you can have the you can be the most critical. Like, man, is these people really serious? Like, that's the that lead management piece. Piece is the one where you really got to shut up that voice in your head. Because that voice in your head is going to tell you you're wasting your time. It's going to tell you, yeah, you just sat down in here and you spent two hours and you got one person on the phone, bro, you ain't did nothing. When in reality, you didn't did a lot, right? Even though that lady wasn't answering my phone call, she saw them. Even though she didn't respond to the text message, she saw the text, right? So when I got her on the phone, yeah, initially she didn't know who I was and she didn't connect the dots, but it took 30 seconds for she was like, oh, you're you. Right. Right. So she still saw it. It, it still kept me in the peer view of it all. So that's where you got to shut that voice up. And that's why one of the things that we that we really promote is the daily success habits tracker. Like it's the points. It's the point system. So now we're not worried about the results of the activity. We're worried about are you doing the activity? Are you making the phone calls? We don't care about if they answer. We don't care about it if they say, yeah, come meet me. We don't care about it if they set the appointment. We don't care about that. All we care about is, did you make enough phone calls? Did you send enough text messages? Did you send enough emails? Right? Like we put points based on all of that stuff. Because what I, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, if you make enough phone calls and you make enough text, send enough text messages and enough emails and you do enough open houses, you will get people and you will get appointments, right? It ain't got nothing to do with how good you are, how savvy you are, how much you know. Like that's another thing that holds the agents up. I, I mean, I don't know enough. I don't know enough about the contracts. I don't know enough about, I don't know what to say. I don't if, if you make enough phone calls, you send enough text messages, you send enough emails, you do enough open houses, you will get appointments, all right? And you get enough appointments, you will get clients, and you get enough clients, you will get contracts. And if you get enough contracts, you will be very satisfied with your financial situation as a real estate professional. Most people are not doing enough activity to start. They ain't even getting started. They ain't even got started. There are times, look, one of the things we do, we do this lead distribution where we got close to 300 people on this lead. And Jackie, Margaret, they my witness. Laverne on here, she my witness. I ask them. It's, all, it's close to 300 people, leads that we didn't attract it from the, the different events that we're doing in 2024. I asked them over the last seven days, how many phone calls did you make? From this spreadsheet, I'm not even telling you from the stuff that you're doing. I've handed you a list of people that said they have real estate need or a desire. How many people you called the last seven days? Um, three. <laughs> um, five or here's the one right here coach 
I was too busy. I didn't call none. It was so, I've been so busy, coach. I've been so busy. You was too busy to do bucket number one. Clearly, listen, if you're too busy to do number one, I know you ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing none of the other buckets because you ain't got nothing to do in them buckets. So what are you, as a real estate agent, what are you busy doing? And what you're busy doing is stuff that's not real estate. Like you're not working. You're not doing real estate. You so you're not a you're not a realtor. You're not a real estate professional. You just have a license. Ah, oh, look at Joy. Joy like ah, oh, no. license <laughs> things. Oh, listen. If you was a realtor, you would do what realtors do. If you was a real estate professional, they could look at you and say, "Oh, he must be a real estate professional." Right? Because of what you're doing. Right. But if you, if a person look at you and look at your habits and your activities and they can't say, oh, he must be a real estate professional, then you just have a real estate license. Right? What they say, if it's a duck, if it, what they say, if it's walk like a duck, it talk like a duck, quack like a duck, <laughs> it's a duck. Well, I can, if it ain't walking like a duck and if it ain't quacking like a duck, right? right? Hold the light. If it, <laughs> I don't quite know what that is. Right. But that's the mindset. That's the mind frame. Until they got somebody like at Coach Mike who's been in it long enough. Like sometimes I just feel like, you know how you get to a certain age where you just don't care what people think. You just say it. I think that's kind of where I'm at in real estate. You I don't know, care. Don't yeah. Know. I'm getting is that what it is? My no filter. filter. My fil I'm losing I've I've lost my filter. All right. Whether you believe it or not, whether you take it or not, whether you accept it or not, it don't matter, but I'm gonna say it. Right. Because it needs to be said. It's the truth. Truth don't need to be defended. Truth can stand all on its own, right? Ideally, I don't want to scare you out the business, but if I scare you out the business, yeah. I think also people don't have funnels. Mm. Uh, like for me, I did triple seven for three years. I would, in my notes, I would always write their birthday, their kid's birthday, or one day. Mm -hmm. I didn't customize it and realize you need to, you remember your friend's birthday, all of them, are they making money? And that's what my mentor would say. But I would always remember my clients when I finished their deals, their birthday, their kid's birthday. And they, they always remember me because I'm always sending notes or, hey, just wanted to say happy birthday to your kid. Like, you remember that? Mm -hmm. um, it makes so you memorable. Like six of my deals that I closed last year came from people just referring me. It's like, hey, even when I moved to Texas, I was like, hey, I'm moving to Texas. If you know anybody, they're like, actually... If you have damaged properties in Texas, let me know. So I started walking around and finding damaged properties. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, we'll send them the information. They were put to work because I worked with them. Yeah. Or you have to be memorable for them to remember you and to actually have your number saved. Or even if I've had clients who change their numbers, they're like, hey, Umi, I just wanted to remind you, I changed my number, mm -hmm. change my mm -hmm. number. Yep. And that's the funnel people forget to create or relationship with people. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, it's that lead management, mm -hmm. right? You got to have, I said it earlier, they do not have a lead management strategy. They don't have anything. Like they don't have anything, any intentional way to manage the business that they attract, right? Because again, everybody's looking for somebody that's already ready. Everybody's looking for someone that will not have to be managed. And if they have to be managed, then they just push it to the side. Well, when we think we've all heard that real estate is a pipeline business, have we all heard that? Has have y'all heard that before? Yeah. You've heard that, right? We've all heard that that real estate is a pipeline business. Well, if that if real estate is a pipeline business, that means what you do right now, you're not getting paid off of until at some point in the future. That's what that means. But yet we expect they're gonna show up ready. They're going to show up motivated. They're going to show up and all I'm going to do is have to take a couple of steps and then I'm getting paid. This ain't the business. I've asked people, why did you get into real estate? Oh, it's fast money. Who told you that? Who, who, who told you that? Right? Why did you get into real estate? Oh, it don't seem like it's that hard. Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you getting this advice from? Do not listen to that person anymore. And that's why a lot of people get out of the business. Because they realize, oh, the money take a while to get there. Right. Oh, it's not only is it not easy, this might be the hardest thing I never ever had to do. Right? Yeah. 
Got to get you get up out of there. So it's a pipeline business. So what what you need is is that listen, I can't make I can't make you get paid faster in real estate. I can't, right? And I can't make it easier. But what I can do is that I can ensure that if you follow this plan, you're gonna ultimately end up where you want to be if you follow this because this is based off of experience. This is based off of good information, right? So at the end of the day, we want to we want to get to lead fulfillment, right? We want to get to the appointment. We want to get to the listen agreement. We want to get to them to become a client, but that there's a period of time in between that. And that's where the lead management strategy and process, you got to create something, right? Obviously, one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, I got plenty of lead management strategies that we're currently employing. So you ain't got to figure it out, but you got to be where the information is being disseminated. One-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching. We can get all that stuff set up and ready to go for you personally in your business. But you got to show up where the information is being given out, right? You got to create a lead management system or process. All right. Any questions before I go to the next thing? Comments. We good? We learning some stuff? We going to implement it? When you say, when you say lead, lead management system, what is your term? So I'll use this as an example. We call we call it the ABCs of follow up. All right. When a person comes to me and they say, Mike, I'm interested in buying a house. The first thing I need to do is try to rank that person. Right? The way that I rank them is that I need to determine, is this something that you intend? So it starts with intention. Is this something that you intend to do within 90 days? Intention. So I haven't vetted or anything. I just want to know where your head is, like what you want. Is this something that you intend to do in 90 days? All right. If it's something that they intend to do in 90 days, then I rank them as a B lead. All right. If it's something that they intend to do after 90 days, I rank them as a C lead. All right. Don't worry about the A just yet because the A confuses people. So don't worry about the A. Just stay with me, B and C. All right. Now, once I determine they're, if they're a B lead, then my strategy is that I'm going to reach out to them twice a month. That's my strategy. Oh, B lead twice a month, the week of the first and the week of the fifteenth, kind of like getting a paycheck. Now the re now, now it's the week of the first beginning on Monday. Now this is why I'm gonna say that. If you get the ideally, you want to get up to about a hundred people that you managing, that you nurturing, that's in your lead management system. Well, of that hundred people, realistically, ninety of them are gonna be not ninety. 80 of them going to be C leads. By 20, 25 of them going to be B leads. And you may got five of them that's A leads. Okay? So the bulk of them is going to be C leads. Then the smaller amount is going to be B leads. So if you got if you got 20, 30, 40 B leads, you ain't going to be able to call all the people in one day. <clears throat> so that's why we say the week of beginning in Monday if you started on Monday, then that gives you that whole week to get through that list of B leads and you touch them. So that's why we say the week of the first starting on Monday, the week of the 15th. At the end of the day, you would have engaged that person twice a month. OK, now, if they want to do it after 90 days, they're a C lead. You want to engage that person the week of the eight beginning on Monday. Like I said, you get up to 100 people, 80 of them see leads, you ain't going to be able to get all of them on that day. So you got to start Monday and that gives you the whole week where you engage them. You hitting them once a month, right? Now, there's a multitude of things that you can do to touch them. You can call them. You can text them. You can email them, right? If Here's the great thing, again, about social media. If you go and you find these people on social media and you're connected with them, now, when you're posting on a, on a regular basis, they're seeing you. That's another way that you can use that tool when it comes to lead management. So that's one example, right? Okay. Um, good question. How, wait, how often do you contact like C leads? Once a month. So we contact. So we contact C leads once a month. Um, the week of the the week of the eighth, beginning Monday. So in any given month. The first week, we hitting B leads. The second week, we hitting C leads. The third week, we hitting B leads. Every now and again, you get a free week. You might get behind, so you can get caught up. 
in the 80s, they didn't already do the Apple Don't worry about them. Oh, See, didn't okay. I just didn't I tell her that earlier? <laughs> I right. told her that earlier, didn't I? Do not worry about the A leaves. They confuse everybody. That's my best thing. I don't, you know. Once I once I get you to understand that B and the C, okay. then I'll slowly introduce A. Okay. So we don't throw a cog in the wheel. All right. Okay. But B and C is the most important because they most of the people A's, yeah. They're A's ready. just kind of show up. Ready. Yeah. Ready. No, they're not. See, A leaves are not ready. Then that's no, why I don't ready. that's why I don't bring up the A leaf thing because okay. it throws people off. Okay. Right, because you you see B and C, and in your mind you're thinking, oh, B leads must be more valuable than C leads. So then, if it's an A lead, it must be more valuable than everybody. So the A leads must be the good leads. Listen, a lead is a lead. Right. There is no good, bad, or indifferent. Like they all the same. The the B and the C and the A determines what you do with them. That's all it is. Right. So you can have a person that that does not have the intention to buy for twelve months. But at some point, they're an alien because of what needs to happen next with that person. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that's why we're not introducing A's just yet. I don't want to confuse y'all. Oh. All right. But but it ain't got nothing to do with them being ready. Oh. Why we calling them an alien? All right. Or wanting to do something right now. Because I told y'all earlier, them people already have agents. Didn't I say that already? Yeah, me. <laughs> not unless you made it an a -lead. you gotta make a lead that's what you gotta do all right so let's talk about social media all right so now in everything that i talked about and everything that i just that i just mentioned somebody tell me now how could you use social media to help with bucket number one to help with these three levels of income producing activities how can you how can you use it Ask questions all the time. Okay, ask questions. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Well, let me ask this question first. How often should you be on there? If you're going to use it to attract business, if you're going to use it as it relates to these income producing activities, how often should you be on there? Yeah. Really, bro? <laughs> <laughs> What are you looking for? He's in the what are you looking for? And then cash. There's an L on the wall. I apologize. I apologize. Anyway, okay. Um, okay. So every day, right? Every day, right? Now, when now people hear that. I gotta be on there every day. Oh, they see it as a burden, like, oh my God, every day. Can I just do it once a week? No. Can I just do once a month? No. Can I just create an account and just say yeah. I got a I got a LinkedIn page? You can schedule your posts. You yeah, don't actually have to get on there. You just gotta dedicate. Jerry, I'm just time. telling I'm telling you what the people, how the oh, people right. feel about it. So the one social media once a month, you record once a month, and then you just have bashed out content for yourself. Right. And the thing is, algorithm will put you out the more active you are. That's not just only, posting. Only stop, stop, only stop. <laughs> All right. Sorry. And the reason I'm telling you to stop is because until a person sees it as necessary, mm -hmm. they're not going to do it. See, I've been doing that, Omi. I, I've been giving them the game on how to do it, how to make it more efficient, how to make it easy, how to make it. I didn't did all that. And guess what? In Omi, they still don't follow instruction because they got to see it as necessary. Which is what I'm trying to articulate today is to show you why wouldn't you be on it every day? If this thing is going to get you through bucket number one, which ultimately is going to get you to bucket number six, which ultimately is going to get you paid, why would you not do it every day? You see the difference? So now once that mindset change happens, not only will, does it take away the fact that we got to give you the game because then at that point, you're going to go find the game for yourself because you see it as necessary. Listen, if you hungry, you ain't waiting on somebody to tell you where the food is, are you? Is that what y'all do? Every day when you get hungry, y'all wait for somebody to tell you where the food is? No, you go find it. Right. It's the same thing. Once you, once you, deter, once you decide, I need to do this, you're going to do it. The information is right in front of you. 
but people are missing it because they don't they don't feel like it's necessary. So that again takes me into we got a month we got a month full of what Umi was about to talk about a month of experts, panels, programs, speakers. This is what they're gonna be talking about: social media and digital marketing. A month of it. But if you don't think it's necessary, we're gonna be like, what are people on Zoom at? They ain't coming to this one. A lot of people ain't coming first. Jamie bought all these pieces, nobody here. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it's gonna be. So you gotta see it as necessary. And what I'm telling you is it's necessary. If you want to make money, this is necessary, in addition to a host of other things. Because the reality is that you gotta attract business. And why wouldn't I attract business on a platform that has more people than the country of India? There's over a billion people on Facebook. Why wouldn't I be on Facebook? Where else am I going to get? Where else am I going to be able to get access and the opportunity to access over a billion people? And that's just one platform. I ain't even brought in Instagram. I ain't brought in TikTok. I ain't brought in LinkedIn. Just Facebook. If you just pick one of them, why wouldn't you do that? I ain't talking about YouTube. Like, why wouldn't you put yourself up in a into a community of that many people? I mean, you wouldn't say, you know what, man, is you know what, Mike, man, there's gonna be a hundred thousand people over here. I'll let you go there and I ain't, you ain't gotta pay for nothing. And you can get access to all hundred and a hundred thousand people. You think somebody gonna be like, oh man, do I gotta go over there? <laughs> Do I got to? My, you can go every day too, right? You can go in there as much as you want to, man. You can access these people. You can engage these people. Do all that. <sighs> man, I'm too busy to do that, dog. <laughs> you know, but that's what we're saying, right? Right. When, right. when we had a, the social media conversation. No, yeah. you, 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 you are, you're not putting yourself in the best situation. Yeah, it's a multitude of reasons, I guess, but I, I think some of it is it's just it just has to be presented to them in the right way. A lot of people aren't seeing it like that. It's not connecting. They're not connecting that part of it, right? So hopefully today, this is something that will help with that uh, and, and it'll be helpful in, in doing that. All right, so I want to share a couple of two things that we're doing at Brooks and Davis. Just two, two things, all right? Because I don't want to take away from um, this month full of information that is going to be so amazing. Hold on. Clearly, I'm not on the right thing. There we go. Miles, man. Thank you. Okay. So anybody participated in BND TV that we do every every week? Anybody? No. Are y'all familiar with BND TV? Mm -hmm. You're not familiar with yesterday? It's a, yeah. Well, no, but it's a part of BND TV. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you familiar with the, the podcast? Podcast. podcast. The podcast. The podcast. The podcast the Monday yeah. Y'all yeah. just didn't know that we branded it BND TV. Right. Okay. Well, we branded it BND TV. Okay. So now, when you think about now, this is something we do every week. Now, we only shoot live content twice a month. Mm -hmm. But we put a show out there every week. Okay. Now, why do y'all think we created this concept? This ain't, now, we know real estate, right? Well, we could, but this isn't really real estate. Like, this is broadcasting. But why? Why do that? Every week, we got digital shows going live on Facebook and YouTube. Why do that? 
based on what we talked about today. So reach, reach audience. Yeah. Okay. Do what? Reach your audience. Reach your audience. Okay. Now we're a real estate brokerage firm and we create digital shows. Like, how does that relate? Oh, you you do real estate, you're a real estate brokerage firm, but y'all spend all this energy and this time doing digital shows. Like, how does that connect? Okay, it's marketing. Informing. Informing. And Why? reach people that you might not reach uh in person. Okay, reach people. I mean, y'all, y'all are getting there, right? Yeah. It's the platform. Right? If we're talking about YouTube and Facebook, how many people do we have the capacity? Countless, right? So BND TV is about us being in front of somebody. It's a stage, it's a platform. So now when we create this stage and we create this platform, now it's about what do we say to the people when they look at you? If I walk up, if, if there's a crowd of people and there's a stage and I walk up on the stage, everybody naturally is going to turn and look at me, right? Now, if I ultimately ain't saying nothing, I ain't talking about nothing, then they're going to go back to doing what they was doing. Right. But when I first walk up on the stage, everybody going to look. It's a stage, right? So now it's about, well, what do you do on the stage? The first thing is, is you got to decide that you're going to walk on the stage. Stop having stage fright. You don't want to do social media because you're you, you scared. Well, stop. Go on the stage because the stage is powerful. Then once you get on the stage, we can talk about what you're going to say to the people. Right? This whole BND TV concept, it, it was first isolated shows, right? It first started with the prop, the 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 real to life podcast evolved out of I wanted to do uh, weekly sales trainings virtually. That's what it evolved out of. How many of y'all remember Google Hangouts? Anybody? Okay. So we started a Google Hangout and we would do it every week. All right. But then all of that evolved, all of that changed, and the real to life podcast was a segment within the we called it Create Your New Life. It was a segment within it. So then Jess was like, hey, man, we need to kind of get rid of the rest of that stuff. And then let's just focus on this right here. Because those were like an hour, hour and a half. She was like, man, we're about 30 minutes. Boom, we can hit this right here. It'll be interesting. So thus came the Real to Life podcast. But it was ultimately its own thing. And then the Prime Real Estate Network came because that was a podcast. Rick Davis, when he first started, when he first joined Brooks and Davis, he joined saying, you know what, man, I want to do a podcast. So he kind of started that thing. And at first it was in studio. They would they had a studio, they would go in, him and Larry, and interview entrepreneurs. So that was their thing. And it has its own page, its own YouTube channel, and all that stuff, right? So that was his thing. Well, then we were like, this was during the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, we had this thing called um uh what was it called? What was it first called? What was it called? Mastermind through tough times. Mastermind time. through tough times. Time. Yes. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jess. Mastermind through tough times was an, was an idea, a concept, right? We talked about currency. We talked about ideas as a form of currency. We had an idea. Let's do this Mastermind through tough times. We created another podcast, right? And then uh, Monday Night Live was an idea that Rick Davis came to me. He was like, Mike, why don't you do like a call-in type situation, man, where you answering people's questions, you do it on Monday night. All right. So they all started as their own individual thing. And then we were like, at one point, I was like, you know what, man? It's kind of like we got our own TV channel with all the amount of shows that we were putting out there. And then that's where BND TV kind of came and we packaged it. So instead of it being isolated, now we can package it. So now when you think about our audiences on Facebook and YouTube, that's four times a week. And it's automatic. All we got to do is shoot the content. Because when we, now we're using live, we're using StreamYard. When we shoot it, we spent, third, like yesterday, we did our, we shot all our live shows. They automatically go to YouTube. We ain't got to touch it no more. So now it's long form content. Just come, she chop it up. And now we got content to kind of post throughout the week. But that's just one example. The whole point, but the whole point is we want people to keep looking at us on the stage. 
That's what the whole point is, right? Now that we're on the stage, we want people to keep looking at us because the longer that they keep looking at us, at some point, real estate situation, real estate opportunity might show up, might got a question, might need to do something, right? So that's just one example of using video, right? Because don't want to do video. Now we also we ain't no we, we ain't in the studio. We shot this where was we in here, right? We shoot it here. We ain't gonna pay no they the real the prime real estate network is not in um a studio no more. They shoot it at, from their house. I shoot Monday Night Live from my house. So we're not paying any additional money, any extra money. And it automatically goes to to YouTube and Facebook. I think for StreamYard, we pay 30 bucks a month. And you can do as many streams as you want on multiple uh, social media platforms. It's $30. But here's what's missing. You got to be creative. That's the thing that people, where that's where social media misses people is because they don't want to create. They leave that up for the content creators. Listen, if you're going to be successful in real estate, you better become one. You better become a content creator. And we all have the capacity to do it. We're going to spend the month of March giving y'all some ideas and some concepts. But the start is you got to believe you had a capacity to create content, to create content that people will pay attention to on social media. You got to believe that. Okay. That's just a form of digital marketing. All right. And then here's, here's the other thing that we're super proud of. Is this? How many? How many of y'all have gone to the Houston Real Estate Channel? Y'all familiar? I've never even heard of it. You never heard of it, right? Well, now you have. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you why we created the Houston Real Estate Channel. So I went to an event. I went to the event because they was like, "Man, you can get all this content, and we're gonna feed you lunch, and it don't cost you nothing." I was like, "Bet, I'm there, right?" I thought it was pretty good. It was pretty cool, all right? There was a guy that presented, and he and he showed in his presence because they had a multitude of speakers that were talking, and his portion was about how he created a YouTube channel, how he used how he was using YouTube to generate real estate leads, and he presented how they had created this channel for the DFW area, so Dallas Fort Worth area. So I'm sitting there looking at this and he's going through the videos and he's going through how he, his process was and he's he's showing how many subscribers he was getting and he's showing like the leads and, and, and how he made the videos. And I was like, man. So then I got my YouTube and I'm like, man, let me see if Houston got one of these channels, man. So then my man said, the, he said the magic words. Y'all can use the idea. You should do this for your market. I was like, Bleh. and I immediately came home. I mean, I immediately came back, pulled the core leaders together and say, we about to do this. And I, for about three months, man, kudos to Jeff, man, who's pulling it together, the Margaret pulling it together. And now we have the Houston Real Estate Channel. And this, we launched this channel in January, like the middle of December. Yeah, like middle of December, going into January, we launched the channel. The channel went from zero subscribers to 175 subscribers in two months right we've had more views on videos from me from this video now brooks and davis youtube channel has been around for years we've had more views on these videos in a matter of moments than brooks and davis videos have had what what's happening with the houston real estate channel is is that we're taking, there's a video about Shadow Creek Ranch. There's a video about um, Bridgeland. There's a video about Acres Home, right? It ain't me in it. We use AI, they present the content. We make it in an interesting way. But what's happening is we've literally created an entire YouTube channel that's informing people about Houston. We've created an entire YouTube channel that's informing people from all over everywhere about Houston. So now if I'm thinking about relocating to Houston, what do you think is a great resource for me to go to? 
Right. So now if I know somebody that's relocating in Houston and I've run across this channel, what's a what you think I'm gonna do? That's why it's growing. Because whether I'm relocating to Houston or relocating within Houston, this is informing me about all the places. Now I ain't got to guess. I just go watch this video and it tells me about the schools, the locations, the amenities, the history, the houses that's available. Like it's, I promise you, and I can't take no credit for it because I, I stole with that whole, his presentation is about 30 minutes and I stole all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Man, it ain't it ain't no reinventing. We are not reinventing the wheel. All right, so Houston Real Estate Champ. All right, real quick, like I said, we got some great events that are coming up for the month of March. Any any questions before we get into that? Any questions or comments? All right, who ready to do their social media? <laughs> Y'all ready? Y'all ready to do y'all social media? You have a lot of <laughs> Mary Lucy, I got a lot of ideas, man. You got me pumped up. All right. So, March. This is what we got going on. All right. TL Global. Uh, Thursday, that's tomorrow. We're going to be at the West Office, Katie. Well, it's going to be in Katie, near the West Office. Don't you live out there? Yeah, see, we coming, right. we coming to you. I got to fix the CE classes online. Online? But Louisiana, it's live. Right. It's live. I understand. It's okay. From nine to twelve. Oh, that's oh, but you, the, yeah, it's perfect because the thing started at twelve o'clock. Oh, okay. See, so uh, we got one more person that's gonna be in the building. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. TL Global. Now they're gonna be talking about third party financing. Let me tell you what's good about that. What I say earlier, it's about what are you gonna say when you get on the stage. Well, TL Global is gonna give you some content to inform the people about that will get them to engage, right? So that's gonna be on Thursday, 12 o'clock. Come get the information, the content, come get something to say to the people on the stage. Okay, inform them about it. All right, on Saturday, we're doing a hands-on mentee workshop, right? That's Saturday here at 11 o'clock. And guess what we're gonna do? Dion, who's our head of member development, she's gonna follow the theme of the month, which is social media and digital marketing. So now there's a more intimate environment for y'all to come together. She's going to give you all some insights on what she's been doing, social media, digital marketing wise. Maybe y'all can work on putting together your own social media and, and strategy. All right, because you need a strategy. All right. So that's this Saturday at 11. All right. Also, this Saturday at one o'clock, through partnership with, and you and all of these flyers in the group me. So y'all, y'all gonna get y'all should see them already. Uh, Saturday at one o'clock, New Homes for Houston program. It's the in-person class, Cityside Homes. Y'all seen that flyer, the Cityside Homes flyer that's in the group me, all right, where they're offering $130,000 towards the purchase of a home, right? You think that's some information you can say on the stage to get some people to say, tell me more? But you got to come get it. You got to come get the information. Like, if you're not coming to the class, if you're not, if you're not meeting the people, if you're not building a relationship, the only reason that I even know about this class is because of relationship currency, right? It's my relationships with the city, my relationships with U.S. Bank, my relationships with the builder, City Side Homes. So now there's an opportunity for you to go. And guess what? There may be some people that they attract that do not have an agent. Oh, look at that, right? But at least you get the information that you can take the content and then you can post it. You can send it out, right? Digitally or tell as many people about it. So that's this Saturday at one o'clock. Uh, next Wednesday, our very own head of digital marketing, uh, social media and digital marketing, Jessica Joseph is doing, she is, listen, okay. I just got to say this. We went to a thing uh, Thursday. They said, man, y'all are everywhere on social media. Y'all are everywhere. That's what he said, all right? She the one that's responsible for it. Jessica Jones, she's our head of digital market, social media and digital marketing. She is doing a training next Wednesday. So now, if you want to get your stuff together, you know, pardon my French, I should have used something else. If you want to get your stuff together, who you think you need to be hearing it from? Okay? She's going to be doing a training next Wednesday, 12 o'clock. All right. On Thursday, that's going to be here. We're doing a lunch presentation that's going to be sponsored by Cadence Bank. Again, 
get some information, learn about some resources, learn about some tools that you can inform people about. Because that's how you attract business. You don't educate, you inform. All right. Um, the, the 14th, March 14th and 16th, Houston Black Real Estate Association, they're doing their HUD certificate class. That's the people, that's the class that people take if they want to access the down payment assistance. Right. There are people out there that want to access down payment assistance. They need here's something else that you can inform your people about. When we think about that lead management section. This all of the everything that I'm laying down to you, this is stuff that you could be telling those C leads once a month. This is stuff that you could be telling those B leads twice a month to give them a reason to keep paying attention to you. Right? They ain't necessarily got to respond to the text. They ain't necessarily got to respond to the email. But as long as they don't block you, <laughs> right? Right. You good. Like they ain't necessarily got to answer your phone calls. But as long as in every in twice a month they see you. Once a month they see you, you stay at top of mind, which is what you want to do. You do it by informing people. So that's on Thursday. Saturday, the 16th, the Road to Home Ownership, First Time Home Buyers Club, relationship with the Houston Housing Authority, relationship with US Bank. It's an opportunity to go to the housing authority's building. They're having this all-day workshop. We can get in there because of our relationship. Again, gives you access, and it's all about buying a house, home buying. It's it's this the series that uh, listen. The housing authority has fifty thousand whatever people vouchers that they have. They have like three hundred people that are going through their sustainability program. That's three hundred people that say, "I want to buy a house, and I want to use my voucher to buy a house." Okay, you still get paid a commission, right? That's but only three three hundred out of fifty thousand. So that means there's a lot of other ones that didn't even know they could do it, right. that there's an opportunity. So next Saturday, the 16th, Saturday the 16th, you, because you're a Brooks Davis agent, can go to the housing authority and be amongst those individuals who just give yourself an opportunity to attract somebody. All right. So that's happening on the 16th. Also happening on the 16th, the community tour. Relationship with Oracle Homes. I know y'all seen the flyers for it. Relationship with Oracle Homes. Relationship with... Um, TDECU, right? This one, 103% financing. So not only do the people not pay a down payment, they don't pay their closing costs, right? And then if they get with Covenant Capital, they can get up to an additional six grand. That could buy their rate down, makes the house even more affordable. There's no private mortgage insurance. That makes the house even more affordable. I literally posted this flyer in one of my group meetings and got... I ain't never talked to this guy. It's like 150 people in this group meeting from our Leadership Institute. I ain't never met him. I ain't never talked to him. My man registered for the event. I ain't never talked to him. I ain't never met him. Registered for the event. I, I After he, I saw his registration, I DM'd him. I was like, man, I got your registration. He was like, yeah, man, me and my wife and my kid, we're going to be there. Uh-oh. Tracked to some business. Right? Now, I did. We did have to create the event. But what if you did the same thing? What if you just took the flyer from the group me and you posted it in y'all group me's? I know y'all got a mil million of them like I got a million of them. If you got kids, you got a million group me's, right? But what if y'all just did that and posted it within you all's organizations, your relationships? Maybe that's at your church. Maybe that's at, you know, you in a Facebook group with the, maybe you in a, I got one of our agents, he, he in the Jeep club. So they got Jeeps. He in, tell your Jeep people about it. One on they who buy bikes. Tell your bike people about it, right? But what if you just did that? All I did was post it in a group of uh, black leaders that went through a leadership program together. Post it in there, boom. Matter of fact, two people, right? Uh, Margaret told me yesterday, some other guy, because her name's on the flyer, reached out to her about it and told her, oh, I'm in the leadership thing. So I had two people reach just because I posted in a group meeting. Like, y'all can do the same thing. Y'all ain't got to come up with the events. All right. So that's the 16th. Um, that's the Unlock Your Dream Home Community Tour, Oracle Homes. The 20th. Oh, man, the 20th is going to be amazing. Wednesday, the 20th, we are put we put together a social media panel. Come on now. Social media panel, Vanessa Soto. Y'all go check her out on Instagram. She's one of our agents. Kalisha Collins. Y'all check her out on Instagram. She's one of our agents. Larry W. Brooks. Y'all know how he do. He got 30,000 of them on Instagram. 
and Jessica Joseph again. So you get another opportunity to hear. So now you get to hear from all of them. They're not doing presentations. They're just going to be asked questions. It's going to be moderated, right? Experts. Yeah, and do what I did. Steal it. I stole that man's uh, idea. Take their ideas and, and, and implement it. Execute on them, okay? Um, Thursday, the 21st, is HBRA Lunch and Learn. So again, another opportunity. I don't know I don't know who the presenter is going to be, but what I do know about the HBR and Mary Lou attending one of them, great information, again, that you can utilize to either inform people about or for you to implement into your business to help you with that first bucket, right? Most of when you're going to these events and you're learning information, it's really going to be about you being able to utilize it for that first bucket. Rarely do people give presentations and do events for some of the other bucket stuff, like vetting clients, like the process. Like most people don't really do stuff about that, right? When you go to the events, see things, presentations, classes, and all that other stuff, it's all usually about business development. It's about attracting business, right? So they're going to do that as well. So that's Thursday the 21st. The 27th, Mr. E.L. Crane is doing another class for us. I don't know if it's going to be here or if it's going to be at his office like last time, but it's a brand building. So he's going to be talking about building your brand. And how many of y'all know that social media is a great platform for you to utilize to build a brand? All right. You got to build a brand. You want to build a brand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, part two to the six, uh, to the 14th? Let's because see, 14. The 14. You in March? Yeah. What does the 14th it say? It says the HBRE Hub Class Part 1. Oh, no, no, no. But part two for that is on the 16th. It should be on there. That's a Saturday. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I just missed it. That's sorry. okay. All right. So brand building, E.L. Crane. It's 27, 28. Mr. Keith Webster is coming down. He does business in all 50 states. He operates out of Atlanta, Georgia. He's going to be coming into the city. And we're going to be going to the Maggiano's near the West office. And he's going to be talking about what I, I can definitely tell you about Apex Mortgage is that they got some phenomenal tools that can help you grow your business. How about house? Look, Joy bought her house through them, right? Yeah. So he's going to he's gonna bring some phenomenal tools, resources that you can use, content that you can say on from that stage to help you attract, not only help you attract business, but you utilizing those uh, tools can help with your reputation, how people see you in this in this business, right? So you and you're gonna get a great meal, Maggiano. If you ain't never been to Maggiano's, Maggiano's got some really, really good food. And you ain't gotta pay for it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so come get this grub. Let's come eat. Let's eat. You said on the 27th? That's gonna be on the 28th, Thursday. Thursday, 28th at 12 p.m. Oh. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Yeah. All right. And then the last thing for March is the 30th. So through our relationship, um, doing a gun training class. So Action Jackson gun training class uh, is brought to, is facilitated by Sergeant Jermaine Jackson. He's a good friend of mine. So again, relationships. Right? But now we have this gun training class as an opportunity to engage right, our sphere of influence, our top 50, our leads something of value, something that giving people a reason to pay attention, right? So that's so that's our month. Like, see, busy month, right? Busy month. Y'all are going to be seeing the flyers. Y'all are going to be getting the information. So show up. <laughs> show up. Take advantage of it. Okay? Yes, so sir. the one that's for tomorrow, mm -hmm. it's showing at their global office or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. So it's going to be at their office. It's just going to be near. Like a, um, a or something. Huh? Yeah. When I pulled up. Oh, yeah. Hey, look. Okay. Question. Oh, it's on a blue board. Yeah. So, um, for me, I plan to dive into the international okay. markets mm -hmm. uh, and more of the West. I'm East African. Okay. Uh, but I have connections with East Africa and West Africa. Okay. Do you have anything for? Like trainings for those kind of international nice. transactions or Congress that are taking that care of. that may be like I said we we so we our and this is good for everybody the way that we've done our hold on 
I'm horrible at multitask. They want us tomorrow. Just go sit there. Uh, we'll start. We'll start with the huddle in the morning, and then go black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we like that. Um, <laughs> no, this is far from my house. The TL Global that's thing. Oh, that's that's okay. Yeah, he like he like when uh he like when we be at the K. Okay. okay. But is there more than one office? Uh -huh. Yeah, we got four offices. Well, I mean three. We got three offices, but we're. We we we're in Austin too. We just don't have an office there. All right. Um. But to your question, do we have anything coming up for East Africa International? Right. International. So we've already we've already planned out our first season. The first season ends the end of June. Um. May. 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 Yeah. So now we're working July. The second season is so the first season is from January to May. The second season is from June to uh, October, and it ends with our real estate summit. We use November and December to assess and kind of prepare for the next year. So we have two two seasons of programming. Maybe what we will in the process of beginning to plan out season two. So we haven't come up with our themes or anything. So that's something that we'll talk about. Maybe having a theme around international, um, because you've mentioned it. The person uh, Byron Bartholomew, who I interviewed yesterday on the Real to Life podcast, has a, a international presence. Does work in uh, Panama, Panama City. Mm -hmm. And uh and some other areas. He he's from the West Indies. Yeah. So and I told him, I was like, man, we probably need to begin with you. He's a certified international professional. He has a SIP certification. So we may do that. If that's something that y'all are interested in, then yeah, we can definitely have a theme talking about international real estate and connections, some right. of those resources. Convention. I don't know when in Houston, but I know the Seattle one, mm -hmm. the Washington one, it's in uh July. So basically, we're big, wealthy East African investors are just coming together, mm -hmm. and they pick a state every year, and they just come and kind of like, like, oh, we all exist, you know, yeah. all these people. Let's make this money. Um, <laughs> but they're also like they have kids, so their investment is now in America. Okay. So they need to establish. You guys know the jewelry department in downtown. Best place to make connections with the people inside of there because all those kids that are in there are international. Kids who come from wealthy backgrounds. Oh wow! Like the folklore of West Africans. Oh wow! So that's um, what you be hanging out. I my majority of my friends are in there. I'm about to say, bro. Like we look, we 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 next to the man. Like we ain't got to go build a relationship. You got him already. We yeah. just need a relationship with you. <laughs> <laughs> so they their parents are always like these are when I say wealthy. They're just sitting on money and they need to buy a house because their ass will be kicked back to excuse me. I mean, they'll be kicked back to. Uh, where they're from, yeah, yeah, yeah. if they don't establish some type of relationship in America. Oh, residence. Yeah, which that means owning a house. Uh, a lot of them are on work visas and mm -hmm. work for a tech company. Mm -hmm. They only have two years. Mm -hmm. So they have to either buy a property saying that they're contributing to American society in some way yeah. or, or investment property. Uh, what we waiting on? What are we waiting on? Yeah, come give them like, come on, like we we ready, baby. We look, Houston is for sale. Let's go. Yeah, no, it, Houston is for West Africans. It's the Nigerians. It's their this is their hub. A lot of the clubs that you know, a lot of people don't know, is owned by Nigerians. Uh -huh. It's owned by them. Um, the guy who I don't know if you guys were in the fitness industry, Inaka, mm -hmm. he's owner of Inaka. He just announced on his social media that he's looking for investment property mm -hmm. for his business. Um, man, Umi over here tripping, bro. Like, Umi, we need to, we need to be getting in there. All right, real quick, so I can let everybody go. But thank you for sharing us. And then we can again. It's just about strategy. Mm -hmm. I was telling, I was telling Joy this earlier, right? Everybody's talking about money, money, money. As a money is the currency. I get that, but there are currencies that are more valuable than money, time, relationships, right? And how you deal with those currencies, time, relationship, reputation, ideas. How you deal with those it dictates how much money you attract, right? So it's about leveraging those relationships. So great, you have great connections. Now it's about leveraging it to where we can attract and help those individuals. So we're going to talk more about that. All right.
Uh, I always like to remind you all about the benefits of being connected to Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm as a way to encourage you to take advantage of them. OK, all right. Obviously, the education, I gave you all the list of things that we're doing for the month and, and, and our thought process around it. You know, you're a part of the environment. You're part of the other ones on there. The really thing, that I, the ones that I really want y'all to lean into is the leads, right? We do the lead distribution every Thursday at 530. Um, this community tour, we've already attracted over 30 leads for the community tour. That's going to have to be managed, right? Lead management, they're going to have to be managed. People that's already didn't raise their hand and said, I have, I'm thinking about real estate. I got some real estate. So we got 30 new people that we're waiting on. We have the pre home buyer session. We do that every month. That, that's adding. So we're constantly adding new people on the list. But if you're not participating in the meeting that we do every Thursday at 530, you're not getting no leads. All right. And you don't, and any Brooks and Davis agent. So whether you transaction fee or developmental or on a team, or on a team, you get access to the leads. All right. Group coaching. We alternate months. So, I mean, we alternate weeks. The, this week we did all our digital programming. So I didn't do no group coaching. Next week, we're doing group coaching. The week after that, digital programming. So that's how that works, all right? The group, remember with the group coaching and the one-on-one -on -one coaching, you get the credit, right? So when you close a deal, we ain't taking all your money, all right? Right, okay. <laughs> Join, that's why I looked at John my eye. We ain't taking all your money because you've been doing the coaching, all right? You get a credit every time you participate in the group coaching, every time you participate in the one-on-one -on -one coaching, all right? And I, I and it shouldn't be one or the other. Like you should do both. Pay them all credit. Yeah, well, you you can get up to thirty dollars a week. Oh, yeah. Period. But uh, again, you should do both, right? Because if we're gonna begin to build it for you specifically, that's gonna be done in the coaching. All right. All right. That's it, man. Any questions? Any 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 discussion? Any any anything? Got my name down for today. I got you. <laughs> hey, joy, joy, like man, don't be playing with me, man. Shoot. All right. Any any questions? Anything from the people on Zoom? Shay, you got anything for the people? We good. Thank y'all for joining. Good You say we good, Shay? We good to go. Y'all you know, have a good one. Good to go. Good. All right. Thank you. Hey, Shay, for orientation.